Hello, good morning. Happy Monday from Bali. Happy Sunday night for many of you, my friends and family who may watch this or whenever it is that you watch it. So today's theme has to do with dreams and dreaming of being rescued and our knight in shining armor fantasies. So this morning, good morning, I, this morning I pulled a card uh, that made me really uncomfortable. I really didn't like this one. So I had to sit with it for a while. Hi Sa, good morning, good to see you here. So I'll share the card with you and then I'll share a little bit that I wrote and, and kind of unpack that. So here's the card. And this is called Dream. Hi Barbara, welcome. And this is called Dream and you can see there's this young girl there or young woman and she's imagining this love relationship and this knight, you know, he's, he's got the knight armor on but then he has some flowers around him here so suggesting that he's also gentle, um, holding this woman in his arms. And quite honestly, when I looked at this, I sort of felt revolted <laughs> because I, um, I really feel like that old paradigm of the knight in shining armor is incredibly disempowering for women. And um, of course, it's, it's a false thing anyway, but we don't have, that's not the direction I wanna go with this right now. Because when I'm uncomfortable with something, I have to look within and say, okay, what is this in me that's uncomfortable? And, and I recognize that when we are uncomfortable, it's because there's a piece in there that's true for us. So my first question to myself is, Dawn, where in your life are you looking for a knight in shining armor to rescue you? And um, it, for me, it's not in the realm of love. I'm very, very grateful for a beautiful, beautiful love relationship with my husband uh, that has its you know, ups and downs, but is a growing, a deepening love. So it, I know it's not as obvious as that. It's something deeper. It's something more significant. And um, so let's just kind of look first at the image here. We have an image of a woman and she's, a young woman, it's kind of the Cinderella story. She's looking, she's not wearing the most beautiful clothes, she's looking kind of slumped over and um, disempowered and not, not really um, taking any kind of action, she's just sort of sitting there dreaming. And so this is the Six of Water. And the Six of Water is, water is our feelings and our emotions. And the six can be a real peak number, so it's like she's really activated these dreams. Yet at the same time, she doesn't look very empowered. But quite honestly, when you look at this picture of this couple here, look at how small that woman is compared to that guy. It's like that inner feminine, whether this is you're a man or a woman, that inner feminine is so kind of weak and the masculine is taking over. And that's not really, we are called in these times to balance our inner masculine and our inner feminine, whether you're a man or a woman. Having one dominate is not ideal. But, but again, let's look to the theme here, six of water and dream, dreaming. When we're in the dreaming phase of creation, that's a perfectly beautiful place to be. And there's a time and a place to be in the dreamer phase. When we're in the dreamer phase, however, that should look like big, expansive excitement, enthusiasm, everything's possible, dreaming it into being. That is a valid step in the process of creation. But when we look like this poor gal slumped over and fantasizing, that's when we've stayed too long in the dreamer phase and we actually have not taken action. So again, um, when I pulled this card and I felt uncomfortable, what I do is I get my pen out, particularly if I'm uncomfortable, and see what arises. So what arose was where in life 
Are you looking for a knight in shining armor to save you? So let's bring this into this dreamer action phase. Let's say you have a dream for something you want to create. And when I say create, it can be anything. It could be to create that beautiful love relationship. It could be to create greater health in your life. It could be to create a work of art or a performance art. It could be to create that beautiful experience of a lifetime. Whatever it is, the creation part is only step one. Then you have to get into action. So the creation, the dreamer part can also be seen as that sort of receptive feminine principle. But then we have to move into action in the masculine principle. We have to take action. So um, the thing is, there is no knight in shining armor that's going to rescue you from your situation and create that dream for you. Hi, Will. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you here. So where in your life are you looking for a knight in shining armor to, to save you? He or she ain't going to come. You have to be the knight in your own sh for your, your own knight in shining armor. And this is me telling myself and also sharing the message. So we are our own knights. It is time for us to put our big girl or big boy pants on and speak what needs to be spoken. Face what needs to be faced. Make the tough decisions and claim our dreams for ourself. So I thought for a moment, hi Will, I thought for a moment what I would do is apply this, well it would take more than a moment, to apply this concept to each of our chakras, our, our energy wheels in our body that, are, um, that oversee different aspects of our lives to really ask some questions and help guide you to find that place in your life where maybe it's time to step out of the dreamer phase and into the knight in shining armor make it happen phase. So if you'll, if you'll want to join me on this little journey, I would love to have you on a little journey through the chakras and where does dream need to shift into action. And I'll give some examples along the way some simple life illustrations or practical life illustrations for you to explore for how this might resonate best for you right now, this message. So if we tune into the root chakra, the root chakra is at the base of your spine and that is associated with everything that has to do with survival and life circumstances. So if we were to apply the, this um, dream card to the root chakra and where do you need to be your own knight in shining armor. This has to do with anything that's related to money or health. So if you are waiting for that ideal job opportunity to come along but you're not doing anything about it, you're just dreaming about it, it's time to start taking action on it. That's what this card calls for. Or if there's something about your health or well-being like I'm going to join the gym or I'm just waiting for this or that or maybe next year all or anything related to physical health or money or you know the way that you make money. It's time to go out, outside of the dreamer phase and into the action phase. So maybe, maybe for you it's something about like you know I really want to start a business. I'm really tired of working for someone else and I want to start a business. Mm, I think I'll wait till I fill in the blank. So this card indicates it's time to start really taking action on that dream. Do you have to quit your day job in order to start your business if that's what it is? No, but it's time to start taking action. So that's root chakra stuff. Now let's go into the sacral chakra, the lower belly. That's the place of creation. That's where you get creative. That's also the place of sexuality. So. If there's anywhere in your life where you really want to create, again, this could have to do with creating a business as well, but it could also be like, I really want to take a painting class. Or, oh, you know, I have this vision of creating a safe space for children. Or it could be anything that's creative. I want to learn how to dance. I want to learn how to play guitar. I want to, um, I, I want to express myself in a new way. I want to, I want to um, have more, more fire in my marriage and more energy and, 
and change up the way we relate to each other and really put the fire back in our love life. All of that is that sacral energy. So again, it, it's not about just dreaming it anymore. It's time to take action because if you're feeling like you're sitting in a slump over the dream, oh, one day I'd really love to have better love life with my husband of 10 years. No, it's time to do something about it. So if, if that's where that's happening for you. So then we go up to the solar plexus, which is right here. This is your personal will center. This is the place where you make it happen. So this is where you ask yourself, where in my life am I not making it happen? Or where in my life are other people controlling my will? So for example, if you're at a job that you hate and you're putting up with BS from the people around you, your boss or coworkers, and you're shutting up to keep the peace, and you're saying, well, you know, I'm just going to, once I pay off that credit card debt, or once I do this, or once I do that, I'm gonna quit that job, or I'm gonna give them peace of my mind, or I'm going to um, find a new job, but right now this is secure. Well, it's probably time to start looking for how you can give voice to your personal will, or change your circumstances by activating your personal will and that could be by visioning something new it doesn't mean that you have to go in and you know give the boss a piece of your mind right away but you have to start thinking more strategically about how to reclaim your personal will in your whatever that circumstance is and maybe it is it maybe it's putting up with um with a verbally abusive person in your life and it's time to draw the line and say you know what this is going to stop now and if you need to talk that way then I'm not going to engage with you anymore you know in a way that's loving and respectful but is also like really reclaiming your energetic space okay so I got a lot of thumbs up there so I think there's someone's resonating there so yeah reclaiming your energetic space and saying the buck stops here you know you have the you're entitled to your own opinions and you don't get to say them to me and I'm not available for them anymore so I don't know what that is for you and you have to use your wisdom with regard to that especially if there's bigger things at stake but this is really calling this card is really calling stop dreaming about defining your own boundaries if that's the issue and actually draw them <laughs> so then we move up to the heart chakra and this chakra really does relate to the love factor so if you want love in your life, what are you doing about calling that in? I have a very dear friend um, who has helped me a lot with feng shui, and I recently spoke with another friend who was helped tremendously by her feng shui work to call in love into her life. And there are many ways that you can do that, clearing up your own internal conflicts about what love is and who love is. Hi, Angelina, welcome. Um, calling in uh, or, or cleaning up your own internal conflicts about love is really key. So, uh, but, so it's time to take action. So if, if love is what you want to call into your life, love, romance, that partner, the one, that, and, and it's not happening, and you're having a lot of dates and you're having a lot of connections with people but it's not happening it's time to clean up the inside and there are a lot of tools for that NLP uh, is one certainly because if you're running one program that says I don't trust people or I don't trust men or I don't trust women or I don't trust whoever that is you want to call in um, whatever that gender is but then at the same time you want love it ain't gonna come so you got to clean it up, but it's time to take action, not action on getting on another dating site or having another date with another person who's just went went. It's time to take action on the internal, on the heart chakra. So then we go up to the throat chakra and where in your life maybe are you not speaking your authentic truth? Hmm. I was called to pause there. So where is it time to stop dreaming about speaking your truth and stepping up and speaking your truth? And I have a few warrior priestesses here on the call, so you know when it's time to give voice to what is not in integrity, 
uh, in, the, in the public sector, uh, in your personal life, where is the time to speak that truth? Where is the time to speak truth as a warrior for those who cannot speak for themselves? And what action needs to be taken in order to support that? So that is this idea of moving from the dreamer into the action mode in the throat chakra area. The throat chakra is also, by the way, where we actually bring into form that which we are creating in the sacral center. So it is where, you know, in the beginning there was the word. We speak our intention. So also, what are you saying? If you say, you know, if you say, oh, I really hate that all the time, or I can't, you are bringing into form those things. I'll never find love. You know, if in, your, if in your heart you're saying that, or, oh, I really want love, but, you know, I'm getting older, maybe it won't happen. Hey, you're, you're bringing that into form, throat chakra. So where in your life do you need to speak truth to power or need to speak your truth now in order to move from the dream into action? So that could be speaking with um, angel investors to fund your vision. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't have to be conf confrontation. It could be speaking in that way. So then when we move up to the third eye, the visioning center, this is the third eye is... This is uh, the, the, the intuition, the inner guidance, the inner eye. And so where is a time to take the vision and the dream and really move into action? Or really be honest about what you're seeing. Really be honest about what you're seeing. Sometimes it's easy for those of us who really want everything to be nice and to have harmonious relationships with people to really be honest and go, you know what? That person or that, that exchange was actually pretty toxic. And I need to be honest about what I'm seeing. Now, if it's here, you, you might not need to speak anything, but just being self-honest about what you're seeing is really important. That's the first step to any reasonable action anyway. We have to be honest with ourselves about what we're seeing. And that can be really tough. If it's in a close relationship, that can be really tough. And sometimes we need guidance. Sometimes we need, you know, yesterday's card was guidance. Sometimes we need the perspective of, of people who can be honest with us, a grounded friend who can say, look, you know, here's what I'm seeing and I love you and here's what I'm seeing. Or the consultation of tarot or astrology and this is where those tools are incredibly, incredibly powerful. To give you guidance or a well vetted psychic who's not putting their own uh, personal spin on it who's very high vibration so that they're bringing in high vibrational guidance um, from masters you know high vibrational masters then though that's also a way getting perspective so being honest with yourself so that you can take the right action and then crown chakra how do you so Crown chakra and dream, how are those two connected? Well, the crown chakra is our connection to the divine, our higher self, our over soul, our spirit, the eternal being. Now, if we're just open without a filter and we're running a lot of low vibrational programs within, like we haven't done our inner work, then any Tom, Dick, and Harry, to use an old American phrase, can come in and, and give you information. So this is, you, we have to be careful here and you have to really be discerning. So, so when you ask for higher guidance, you have to be in a clean, clear state or bring, pull light into your body first and then call in that guidance. But if you're receiving divine guidance for something you have to take action on, maybe it's coming in the forms of dreams or intuition or that repeated, like you keep seeing the same theme over and over again showing up in your field or in your life, then it's time to start taking action on this. And again, to go back to what I wrote in my journal that I shared at the beginning, it's time to put our big girl or big boy pants on and start taking action on what we are being guided to. So I'll share just a little, without revealing too much, a little way that this showed up for me and why, a part of why this card was so uncomfortable for me today. I had a situation a couple of months ago with a, an encounter with someone 
that was very uncomfortable. And my decision at that time was to, um, <clears throat> to no longer engage. And I, and, and I know that that was the right thing to do in that time based on a lot of circumstances, bandwidth, the level of intensity, the level of maturation and development and all of that stuff. Um, the inability to have the tools to sort it out in any other way, et cetera, et cetera. So in my field now, and I knew it was gonna happen here in Bali, I was forewarned by the tarot actually. Um, the opportunity has come again for me to handle the situation in a different way in the guise of a totally different person. And so this I think is how I wanna bring, I wanna start wrapping up with this theme. So I wanna come back to the eagle's eye view. When we don't address an issue in a way that is healing and clarifying for ourselves, it keeps showing up. This is why we have that joke about, you know, the first marriage, you marry your father. <laughs> because if you haven't, or your mother, uh, if you haven't cleared your baggage around your relationship with your parents, your other gender parents, the person you marry, whether they're the same gender or other, will often exhibit the same behaviors. And you won't see them at first because they look like a totally different person. But in the end, or at some point later on, you go, oh, I married my father, or oh, I married my mother. So what is this about? Why is that? You see, our challenges in our life that are unique to us have a bigger archetypal theme that we are here to work out. They're soul lessons. And when we don't deal with them, we could get rid of that particular relationship, that particular job, that particular business, that particular, you name it, family member, that particular place, location of living. It doesn't matter. Wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Welcome. So good to see you here. So wherever you go, there you are, which means that whatever that piece of healing that needs to take place, that, ha that wound that hasn't been healed yet, whatever that piece is, it's gonna keep showing up in your field in the form of another person, another job, another relationship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it all comes back to the, the thing that I kind of share in all my videos, which is we have to do our inner healing work. It is time, it is time, it is time. We can change jobs, we can change relationships, we can change friendships, we can change locations. If we don't deal with our wounds, they're going to keep showing up again and again and again in the form of one circumstance after another. Yeah, right, Sa wowzers. And so for me, in the middle of the night last night, I woke up and I was sick to my stomach, nauseated, not actually vomiting, but just my stomach turning, turning, turning. So I just tuned in and I asked my body, body, what are you trying to tell me? And bingo, it was right there. Remember that circumstance a few months ago, Dawn? Yeah. That situation that happened just now, the other day here in Bali? Yep, that's the thing. Time to clear it up. Time to do it at the new octave, the new level, with new tools, more compassion, more love, more willingness to clear this. Because if you don't clear it, guess what? You'll go back to Sedona and you'll get another opportunity. So this is we, we those of us who are awakening. We are right now at this time on the planet here to heal and clear the old baggage that shows up as our personal life circumstances. And when we don't do it, here's what happens. We slump over in a funk dreaming the dreams that will never come to reality until we start taking action on them. And when we start taking action on them, sometimes those old wounds come up and they come up to be cleared. They come up to be cleared and healed so that we can move forward and actualize our dreams. And so I wanna remind anyone who's on this call, if you feel like you're really identifying with her right now, it's okay. 
It's perfectly okay and it's perfectly understandable. It's really scary sometimes to move toward and act on our dreams. I get it, I get it, but there is no knight in shining armor who's going to rescue us. This work is for us alone and there are many helpers on the path. There are many wise teachers, helpers, and mentors who are at the ready to help those of us who are, those of you who are awakening to do that inner work, to clear the wounds, and to move from the dreamer into the, your own knight in shining armor to actualize your dreams. So let me just, I'm going to take a moment here. Hi, Chris. Welcome. I'm going to take a moment here and tune in and just notice if there's anything else that needs to be or wants to be shared on this topic. Okay, so I took you on a little journey through the chakras today, which is different. It's different than anything I've done before. And what, the reason why I did that is because I wanted to use the chakras as a way of looking at the different areas of life where this energy may be showing up for you, where you're just dreaming about something you really desire but not actually taking action. And that leads to the last piece. There is no knight in shining armor that's going to rescue you from the outside. There's no external God, there's no external authority, there's no external expert who's going to fix whatever it is that you wish for. You are that knight. And there are helpers, yes. There are teachers, yes. There are wise ones, yes. There are healers, yes. And we are here to facilitate your empowerment, not to do it for you. It's really about you claiming what it is you wish for in your life and then getting the helpers, allies, teachers, and mentors to guide you, not to hand over your authority. And that's part of the whole age shift we are going through as we shift into the age of Aquarius. The times of giving over our power to a doctor, a lawyer, a, a priest, an external authority are over. They're coming to an end. It's time to claim that power for ourselves and then turn to those experts to support us in our own sovereign decisions so that we are not victims passively awaiting someone else to bring forth what we wish for. So we choose instead to be our own knight in shining armor with the allies and helpers available to us. So with that, hi Doug, thank you for coming on the, the video today. I'm actually about to wrap this up. So mwah, love you darling. And so with that, I am going to uh, bring this to an end for today. And as always, offering you bright blessings and much love from here in Bali, where I'll be for another, I think about 24 days or something like that. So I love you lots, everyone. I'm wishing you bright blessings. And as always, if you have found some value here, please, please, please make a, make a relevant comment in the, in the comment bar below, because that's what helps this spread, this video, the, Facebook will spread it more if it sees engagement. And then, who knows, this might show up in the news feed of someone who needs that message right at the right time because that's the magic that happens when we are seeking for our answers. The answers can come. So if you'd help me spread the message, I'd appreciate it. If you like what I'm talking about, by all means, check the link that I'll, I will link above once this live video is over and check out some of the ways that I work with people. And for the brothers on the call, just so you know, my website really is, it's directed toward women and I do work with men as well. Just, you know, I, I work with mostly women and I do work with men as well. So with that, I'm sending you much love and bright blessings until tomorrow. Mwah! Hmm.